In this episode of the Red Eye Report, we talk deception. We grandstand in front of a bunch of grieving parents. And as usual, we, we find a happy medium between BS and big breasts. With me this week is the All Thing Oracle. Oracle's been MIA for a few days. He wants us to believe he has a fancy new job. Really, he's been catfishing an entire group of foreign exchange students from China. Hell yeah. Big yeah. daddy. Next to him is the soot-covered ashtray. Ashtray has been slowly but surely recovering from an unfortunate ass dog incident. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I, I ate it sideways. Too hot. I ate it sideways. Yeah. You've also got a fluffy teddy bear. For some reason, he likes it when his youngest dog gets, and I quote, up inside me. See, that's some weird ass <laughs> oh. shit. Yeah. Y'all, are trying to, y'all are trying to put on me. That ain't cool. <laughs> Last at least. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the mystic. I'm so diabolical. I once made my kids believe I loved them. <laughs> That's, you're not diabolical. It's called parenting, bro. <laughs> I'm fucking parenting. I once told my son uh, that he maybe we, we, we was being a little bitch in the car, and we stopped the girl. We were going grocery shopping. He's like, "What, what are we doing?" I was like, "We're gonna. I'm gonna trade you in for a kid with chubbier cheeks because you're not nice." <laughs> oh, so snap! You hit him oh, on the cheeks, Mark, huh? Yeah. I didn't trade him in. Of course, I love my son. But anyway. <laughs> so, all right i'm just gonna i'm just gonna go through here this there's a lot of lot of oh information. wait uh teddy is queuing us for oh, the yeah, week yeah, we was what, what happened to teddy who we benefit this week who we got <clears throat> oh it's ashtray can't see on the feed uh we're benefit uh, we're oh, benefiting uh, all all the pit bulls that survived michael vick's uh kennel Oh, nice. Good. Oh, yeah. oh what'd you they're, do? They're all probably Ashtray. dead. So, Vicaroonie 1, Vicaroonie 2, that, that was like Vicaroonie 3. I, I just, I also, I, I, I did that to call attention to the, to the fact that uh, Michael Vick's shit was, they, they have a 30 for 30 about that shit. But uh, everybody's forgotten about Brett Favre stealing millions from Mississippians to build his daughter a fucking volleyball court. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking old Brett Favre. Good old yeah. Brett Favre. And the Favre, dude man. makes like $25 million right. a year. Yeah. He's, he can't got, build he's a got a flash board. his yellow dick. Mm-hmm. And he's got to steal is, from fucking steal people on welfare. Got to pull out his uh, old uh, half flaccid pud. Uh, half flaccid pud. Anyway. All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so awesome. the Doddleston messages. I just randomly saw this video, right? Or a video about this. I never heard him. Uh, me neither. And it's fucking the level of fuckery that was involved in this is fucking amazing, right? Like, there's all these different people that they think did it, but like, no one really knows. Nobody knows. So, Nobody's the Donaldson messages are a set of unexplained emails, if you will, from a person living in the time of King Henry the Seventh claims he was given a computer by a mysterious entity from the year 2109. The quiet Cheshire village of Doddleston, a few miles from the Welsh border, may not be the first place that comes to mind when you think of time travel or even bizarre ghostly phenomena. But in in the mid-1980s, 1985, Cheshire economics teacher named Ken Webster received a series of cryptic messages on his BBC Micro home computer that appeared to have been sent by someone living in the rain living in the reign of King Henry VII. In those days, the internet was a tiny, almost unknown network operated by a few specialists. So he he actually got the loan, or the, the computer was loaned to him from the BBC, um, and it had no means of connecting to the outside world. So it didn't actually, oh, okay. it wasn't connected so, to the internet. Yeah, and what year was this again? 85. 85. Yeah, fuck, there wasn't even really a public internet then, was there? So the computer no. actually lacked a yeah, hard drive, uh, relying on small floppy disks, like you did. So it, it had to have like a, if it didn't have a hard drive, it was like... That would have been back in the classic floppies when thing. they actually flopped. Yeah. 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 Right. So um, when Ken left the computer switched on, but unattended, the messages appeared on the micro's floppy drive, apparently sent by a man named Lucas, who was living in the 16th century. The messages were written in an old-fashioned but still more or less understandable form of English. 
The first of them in a file of apparently addressed to Ken, his girlfriend Debbie, and their housemate Nick appeared in December 19- oh, it was 1984. It appeared to be sort of poem that began, True are the nightmares of a person that fears. Safe are the bodies of the silent world. So Ken was baffled by the mystery file. It's like this file just fucking popped up on his desk, like his heart, or his, you know, his right. Mind, and he's probably like, in. Hazel, have you been sitting down writing romance right. novels again? Um, <laughs> so he was baffled, but with Christmas coming, he soon forgot about it and wasn't until the following February that he borrowed the machine from work again. The next message was more clearly beginning of a con- of a conversation, commenting on Ken's strange modern English. The writer appeared to have been a former occupant of the cottage who saw electric lights as a thing the devil maketh. <laughs> adding to the mystery at Bobby around the same time. Lights. Adding to the mystery at around the same time, there was a spate of paranormal events in the cottage. Tins were found inexplicably stacked up in the kitchen. Unexplained messages and chalk were found on the walls. <laughs> and Ken and his housemates occasionally heard phantom footsteps. On one occasion, Debbie says she came home to be faced with a six-foot-high pile of furniture. Debbie, I'm calling bullshit up. (laughs) So as the strange computer conversation progressed, the mysterious presence identified themselves as Lucas Wayneman, who claimed to have been living in a house on the site of Meadow Cottage during Henry the... Now this says Henry the Eighth. I don't know what's real. (laughs) <laughs> None of it is. Henry the Eighth or Seventh, something like that. Marriage to Catherine Parr. So yeah, it was Henry the Eighth. Although the messages were oddly inconsistent. At one point, the writer claimed that they were writing in 1521, but gave King Henry the Eighth's age as 46 when he would have been 29. But Lucas explained his evasiveness as natural caution because he was afraid of being arrested for witchcraft. Come on now. <laughs> So, <laughs> did, okay, so did, did Lucas ever give her? I'd be afraid of being out. called a loon. So hold on, we got a lot of we, oh, Eddie, we're just beginning, buddy. Okay, so did he ever give a reason of how of how Lucas could could you know? Teddy's asking questions to the movie theater screen again. My bad. Go ahead. Keep You'll going. You'll see, dude. You'll see. So far, Ken's how tale sounded that? like a computer age ghost story, God but then it got that. even stranger. In one of his replies, Lucas expressed surprise that Ken was writing in 1985. You said your time is 1985, but I thought you were from 2109, like your friend who brought me the Leems Boist. The Leems Boist appears to have been the device brought by a person named only as one that Lucas was using to communicate with the future. Later, Lucas revealed that he had been using an alias to evade witch hunters, and his real name was Tomas Harden. So Ken's friend, Peter Trinder, did some research to track down Harden, and later spoke to a BBC interviewer who insists that if the story was in fact a hoax, he had nothing to do with it, and he didn't need, he didn't see how Ken or Debbie could either. So at one point, John Bucknell and Dave Welch, investigators from the Society of Physical Research, I'm not sure that's super <laughs> upsetting. <laughs> Fucking legit, bro. Physical, uh, legit, man. Visited the cottage to see if they could bonafide if they too could communicate with Lucas. Even with Ken and Debbie out of the room, some messages still got through. So there was no one there to send them, and they were still receiving them. Hmm. So this, you know what I'm saying? To like, this hey, unconnected like how computer. would they do us? Ancient yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. An examination of the events on Carol Vordman's Out of This World show could find no explanation for the mystery. So that was whatever fucking hmm. Peter Lay, this YouTube page thing. Peter Lay, who runs the Nostalgia Nerd YouTube channel. You ever seen that? It's no. actually a pretty good fucking YouTube channel. Um, he dives. That's where this was from. That's where I saw this. Mm. Uh, suspects that the entire mystery may have been a hoax, which goes some way to explaining the inconsistency of the message between past and future. So the orchestrator of this whole campaign seems to have become overwhelmed with the task, leaving too many loose threads, he says. Uh Peter points out how often the messages came through, come through after Debbie has been alone with the computer. Oh, uh, he fucking told- Debbie. Yeah, God yeah. damn, Debbie, writing her romance novels again. <laughs> uh, so yeah, while the BBC Micro was capable of some networking, it seems highly unlikely to Peter that the messages were somehow transmitted from another machine. 
even if the BBC micro was connected up to the internet, he says, that implies that there's a box connected up somewhere that has a link to the past. <laughs> like, that doesn't make any sense. Or yeah. somebody's just <laughs> a fucking bullshitter. Yeah, or well, someone's just fucking type into the... Yeah, you can get the world's gonna... first internet troll right here, bro. Yep. Oh, dude. Uh-huh. That's towards like... the end of the 16th month, toward the end of the 16th month phenomenon, the mysterious future presences from 2109 made an appearance. Uh-oh. Dun, dun, dun. Ooh. Like Promising. physical appearance? No. They wrote a messages, too. Uh. Promising that Harden... They beamed into the room. What's up, bro? Y'all been talking to a homie in the past? They promised that Harden, the guy from the 1500s, was writing a book about his communication with the 1980s, and it would one day be found. It hasn't been found. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. So, Wait, so the guy was, in the future in said like sixty, right? The guy in the future said he's writing a no, book no. about his rut. His no his, twenty. Uh, the guy sent messages from the future. The the YouTube video has it. It's way more in depth. Um, and I think I had the link. I think I fucked that link up. I'll put it back in there. I'm say. <laughs> the YouTube video is way more in depth. Like the he has like the actual messages that were sent. You know what I'm saying? Like this mm-hmm, article right. doesn't have all that shit. But they were they they actually um they actually I whoever was doing this was going to the trouble of finding out how they actually spoke in the 1520s because it was accurate to that time period. <clears throat> So these, so uh, it, that's what fascinates me is that someone was so fucking bored with their life. Well, that they, yeah, they didn't have Pornhub yet. Well, yeah, if like they were that. the one person that wasn't doing <laughs> cocaine at at the time, I mean, what else are you gonna do? In the 80s England, yeah. <laughs> oh man, that's an, that's a fucking. It's just a fascinating fucking story. Um. And then this other one. Oh, I do have the wrong fucking link. Oh, God fuck. damn it, dude. God damn it. I wanted to find out. So I must have misheard you. I thought you were trying to say that the guy in the future was saying, hey, I'm going to write a book. And they're like, you know what? We never found it. <laughs> no, no. The guy in the <laughs> guy future in the told them that right. the guy in the past was writing, writing a book about his experience and interaction with the people uh, from 1985. But they haven't found the book yet. But then In the life. fucking Catholic Church suppressed it. Well, we so still, we still like eighty. Tomas, we still got like eighty right. years of twenty one oh nine. That Tomas like Hardenen ate it. Small little pieces. That Tomas Hardenen, that who he said actually his name was, he did actually work for uh, a university near where that cottage was. Uh, mm. Jesus back in the fifteen hundreds in Oxford. Yeah, in the fifteen hundreds. So Wait, like what? like I said, they were doing their research. They were actually yeah. finding. Went to the public uh, library. Oh no! Here it is. He was he it was in a college. He was a he was a vicar of a church in Gloucester. I go Gloucestershire. Gloucestershire. <laughs> however, the fuck Worcester you say that. <laughs> yeah, in some shit in England during hmm. that time period. So he was a real fucking dude. Like you know, they were like they weren't like fucking around. Um. So, like, here's here's some messages that he sent. He said, I thought you were also from 2109, like your friend. Like if your friend who brought the box of lights, pray, question mark. <clears throat> like it, your the, friend. Pray. Yeah. <laughs> so his friend from 2109 brought him a box. That was the fucking... That was I don't even computer. know how to pronounce that Plythe thing. Something fucking Plythe. Yeah, the thing that so, he's typing. So wait a second. Phone. The guy from 2109 brought him a BBC Micro? No, he brought... Yeah, well, that's, what he, that's what he thinks it is, yes. Yeah. He brought him a BBC Micro that he called some other name. It's like a Nipus or something that he called it. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. man, they must have really... Fucked up or something if the computers are BBC micros in 2109. Oh, someone (laughs) held it in their fucking closet. It's just like this fucking shitty ass old 3D printer I'm still running. We don't don't know what the guy, the computer that the guy got back in the 1500s, he caught something else. We don't know if that was BBC. Yeah. 
We don't know what the, it the was. Guy, oh, the guy, I thought you were talking about the guy in 21. Yeah, he, he called it like a, it was called like a life or something or whatever. I can't remember what Mystic said the name yeah. was, but yeah. But the, the guy in 1984, he had the, he had the BBC. So, so you said the guy. So you said the guys from the future said that the that the guy that past is going to make. Uh, Our audience doesn't know what's found. going on. Uh, <laughs> and they, <laughs> that's they're they're in year one hundred nine, twenty one hundred nine. So we still got like eighty years, bro. I mean, this is so my, basically yeah. like watching Sandman or something. You know. Hey, that show is awesome. Fuck you. <laughs> All right, don't you bring that negativity and in here. There were that giant us. cats. <laughs> <laughs> they fucking ruled the world. Uh, what the fuck? <laughs> what is this? Yeah, right. <laughs> it's a reason to go hunting. <laughs> okay, that that, cart- that cartoon part was kind of weird. Yeah, so I get that. But... Damn, COVID. It, I think somebody so just had a, a good full... fucking prank here, man. This is the full. Their this timeline? is the full message that the full first message that was mysteriously on this computer. True are the nightmares of a person that fears. Safe are the bodies of the silent world. Turn pretty flower, turn towards the sun, for you shall grow and sow. But the flower reaches too high and the withers and withers in the burning light. Get out your bricks. Pussycat, pussycat. Went to London to seek fame and fortune. Faith must not be lost, but this shall be your redeemer. What in the actual fuck is yeah, that? Th- I mean, that yeah. would be pretty fucking That's weird. That's some bad to refrigerator get... poetry. Right. To, to boot this <laughs> super <laughs> exciting, like, so, like, niche tech thing that you just So a few home. days later. And this right. was apparently written in 1500? Yes, 1521. Yeah. A few days later, a second message came through, equally mysterious, but this time written in some archaic version of British British English. I write on behalf of many. What strange words you speak. You are a worthy, good man who has a fanciful woman, and you live in my house, who dwell in my home, with lights which the devil makes. It was a great crime to have stolen, bribed my house. Signed, L.W., Okay, so how how long do these these messages go on for? This, this will communicate. Sixteen months. Sixteen months. Eighteen Sixteen, months. Eighteen yeah. months. Okay. Eighteen months. Yeah. And there hasn't has there been any, any other activity? You know, did he disconnect? Did he still have it hooked up? Or no, he finally uh, it doesn't say ran out of uh, ink cartridges. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Just like the fuck, fuck it, they're too expensive. I'm not. I'm not going to go uh, buy anymore. anymore. What they call those ink ribbons, the old, remember when the old word processors you had to load in? (laughs) So over the 18 months, um, messages continue to appear on the computer, and Webster committed himself to figuring out who or what was behind them. He asked the person, or whatever, uh, a series of questions about where and when they were from. He asked what college he went to and who was the reigning king of the time. Points describes an exchange that answered some questions and yet left many more in the wake of Lucas's cryptic reply. Lucas is suspicious about Ken and Debbie's motives. He deliberately lays traps for them to see if they are really from the future. In his time, there was no Jesus College in Oxford. It was founded in 1571. So he thinks that anyone from the future would know he was given what from his perspective is perspective is obviously false information his real name emerges later as thomas harden or harden h-a-w-a-r-d-e-n a-r-d-e-n someone of his name did exist and was vicar of a church in gloucester in 1550 Hmm. so there's another message Mm -hmm. they're creeping us out bro there's another yeah. message. So, well, they, they, good talk. It right. ends up being found or some shit. We're, we're gonna, it, it's, it's, the world's coming to an end. The messages continued, and it became clear that Thomas could see and hear some of the goings on in Meadow College, as he would comment on photos left around the computer by Webster, like a picture of a Jaguar car that Thomas mentioned later in a message. I have found your picture of the cart. But it is a crude thing that with without the horse, it won't go far. Oh, bullshit. Yeah, right. They yeah. saw a fucking jaguar. They'd be like, holy fucking shit. They think it was a spaceship. Right? You know, that thing can fly. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I don't know. Obviously, they're fucking with him. And was this it Debbie? This all happened in England. Was it Debbie? Yeah. <clears throat> it I think it had be to be some... somebody. It had to be somebody who'd seen the who, who knew the picture was there because if they didn't have any cameras set up or anything. Be some what, did, did they have any cameras set up or anything? So twenty one oh nine then starts leaving messages for Ken and Debbie, right? This is after they've been talking with fifteen. This is 25. after they've been talking to the fifteen twenty one dude. Hold on. Meanwhile, the 21... So this is the first one, uh, the singular... So, so this is what they received. Try to understand that you three have a purpose that shall, in your lifetime, change the face of history. We, 2109, must not affect your thoughts directly, but give you some sort of guidance that will allow room for your own destiny. Yeah. That was there was no punctuation there. Upgrade all we the can say is in the that, house. All that we can say is that we are all part of the same God. Whatever he is, question mark, is. <clears throat> dun dun dun. So twenty one oh nine then starts leaving messages for Ken and Debbie, claiming they are involved in an experiment or similar project with a higher purpose. We found so, your nudes. <clears throat> yeah. Twenty one oh nine communicates in a very different tone and language using scientific terms, but also giving little detail about their, about their agenda other than annoyance at Ken and Debbie. When, for example, they find out Lucas's real name and 2109 worry that this will disrupt, disrupt their plans. Like this is how fucking like this, they were crafting a fucking story while fucking. It sounds like she was trying to write her own little fucking romance novel between times. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, so fucking what Debbie. What experiments, Internet, bro, what plans? The questions continued to mount until finally Webster invited a paranormal investigation team called the Society of Physical Research. We've been there uh, to the cottage to investigate. Three times they came, and each time they left with no answers. Obviously, because it's fucking not real. Um, physical research. You know, they Thomas it. said that he was he was being forced from his land. It was never heard from again but said that he would leave something for his friends in the future. And that's when the, that's when the 2109 sent the last message that said he was writing a book and that blah, 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 you'll find it eventually. <laughs> and then said he that's became never, an alcoholic and never finished it. Yeah. Right. I just <laughs> find that that that's so an close. incredible level of detail to go into. Uh, and I guess with somebody. Who, uh, I guess, where did this story come from? Which press, a, like, was it the BBC they were talking to to try to explain this thing? Like, it sounded like it started in the 80s, right? Yeah. So it's pre, like, yeah, all pre-internet stuff. So they they would have been talking to some reporters, I'm assuming, for this story to get to us today. Yeah, I'm assuming. Unless like some said, jackass, just, that video. some jackass made this entire story up about something that happened in the eighties, about some jackass talking to people in the past, <laughs> in the future, and they made it up in two thousand twelve. Yeah. <laughs> just wrote this whole backstory. I hope so. I hope that's really the, the what's going on. Right. Yeah. I mean, it is pretty impressive that nobody, like nobody. F- like Debbie who got drunk one night and she was just like, I fucking did it. I fucking yeah, hate I you it, and right. I did it. Yeah, right. My book is supposed it. to make millions. <laughs> did they did, did they ask the people in the future any questions? Because I, I find it hard to believe to be talking to somebody in the future. Uh, yeah, I know right? I understand talking to somebody in the past, trying to find out who he is. What were but, the numbers yeah. for the I mean, like, I mean, yeah, like I said, that ball. video is much more in depth about what they actually said. You know what I mean? Because uh, there okay. were messages back and forth. <clears throat> right. <clears throat> All right, check out oh. the video on our web. Awesome. Now, right. now we're moving on to the wet sexy section. Check out the sluts. Uh, Oracle cruising around in a Porsche Cayman. Yep. So I had a thing out in LA this past weekend. Went there. LA's still a shithole. Um, bunch of bums and human feces everywhere. Did you see human feces on the street? Oh, yeah. It's fucking everywhere, dude. Like, some of them at least bag it up. Like, they fucking must just shit into dog bags bags. and, like, tie it up and put it on the street. 
There aren't trash receptacles. Look at Pete. Oh, like, there's no trash cans for no, people. No, no trash in? cans. No public bathrooms. Just bumps shooting up, fucking <laughs> and shitting. So now your place was in Soho or just just off of it? Yeah, it was some fucking oldie. Oh, you say three blocks from the Cecil Hotel? Yeah, down by the Cecil. Um, it was, I take it it's just it's it's very affordable to get a hotel room down there. No, or did you actually want to like? Hey, so I affordable see a in L.A. <laughs> well, yeah. the yeah. the whole point of the Cecil was that they split part of it off for cheap hotel rooms in well, L.A. and people yeah. didn't realize it was down in the fucking Skid Row. Yeah, I don't know. What made you decide to choose to go I, down? I, I didn't. Skid Row? I didn't choose that place. It was a place oh. that was provided for me. So. <laughs> Put them down in Skid Row. Yeah, right. yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, it was because it was spot cheap for you, man. Got this tent city wow. of Skid Row, dude. <laughs> right. <laughs> um. Yeah. Anyway, so I got out of fucking L.A. Um. And started going toward Greater San Diego area, which is a much, much, much better yeah. area. And so um. Had uh, my buddy had a Porsche. Came in and I he let it me his drive. Or is he renting it? It's his. So I got to fucking drive it around uh, in the hills of Escondido, lose some money at the casino, and and, uh, and, yeah, didn't, and you didn't Brian Walker it. So awesome, cool. Yeah, yeah. Or Paul Walker it. Yeah. I, I got to tell you that fucking thing because it's a mid-engine car. Um, the handling on that is freakish. I mean, you are. It's so unbelievably responsive. Um, yeah, and the faster you Paul go, Walker could tell you how fast yeah. it is. <laughs> the, the the faster you go, the more it oh no, you can That's right. Was that the same type of car Paul Walker was in? No, I don't think same, so. same same engine type of layout. Oh, yeah. So that was fun because because Porsches have all their weight on the SM. When they go fucking loose, they go loose. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Yeah. So, the, but, the, yeah. But it makes for a responsive fucking vehicle. Well, this is, a, it wasn't at the ass end. It, it's right behind the seat, the engine on this one. Oh, they moved it mid. They moved it mid. Yeah. Okay, so the yeah. Cayman no, is. His, it yeah. wasn't the same layout then. Yeah. But yours, that probably handled a lot better. Yeah. Yeah. It's, than normal 911s so, because they yeah, have it, all the ass end, the fucking right. ass end has so, all the weight. It was a lot of fun just keep going on uh, I, um, I-5 out there, or was it 95? No, I, I-5 out in California, and uh, fucking merging and <laughs> pretending like I'm a fucking race car can driver. I, can I say that again? Like you're, pretending you're in your VR? Yeah. <laughs> This is so intense. But by the time I got home, I got in my Hyundai, I was just like, wow. This is pretty Boring. fucking lame. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Gotta drive this shit home. <laughs> Fuck sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Hey Carol, let's get a new car. Yeah. So that was cool. LA suck my dick. Um, Greater San Diego, <laughs> you're still awesome. You're Boom. still awesome, San Diego. That's right. According to Oracle. Boom. Stay classy. Not according to Stay classy, San, San Diego. Diego. Anyway, the next dude, uh, I'm going to talk about Chris Turner, who is a comedian, I guess, slash freestyle rapper. But he is a, like, upper middle class white boy from Great Britain. Here, I'm going to play um, some audio through. He, so he asks the crowd for five suggestions, and... There's rules. He doesn't take um he doesn't take animals or foods and he doesn't fucking uh and he doesn't take an, a suggestion more than once. So like they'll give him shit like the best one he's ever had is ninth century crop rotation. <laughs> so that's like one of the topics that he has to rap about. And he does like a freestyle rap about five different topics and they flow together and it's it is quite possibly some of the most oppressive shit mm. that i've ever seen all right wow i'm gonna uh, listen to anybody that. you look like you could work at spacex or something where where are you from 
Let's get. You should just advance it. Such like a lovely two, kind three of minutes delicate. In. We don't get them because uh, three people said great. Chris, if I was drawn by one get of the artists, get fucking going here, buddy. Gone with a bit of strawberry jam when it comes to high tea back, in England. Back. Everybody who know your family round never got the shy ones i get a bit of white bread cutting off the crust if you leave them on the edge of the bread i don't trust you i want to make sure they got cheese and maybe a little bit of cucumber yes please i will take a little scone with a bit of strawberry jam when it comes to high tea in england everybody who feels on my team come round and feast upon the tea with the queen lizzie in a palace if you've got a lot of balance if you say the tea tea it's bad, she pours malice on you, getting angry, looking at you crafty, like a little fox, hot box in the back seat. Ah, yeah, that's pretty good. So, like, when you hear, oh. he, you didn't hear what the suggestions were in that, but, like, when he, in the, when he does the raps, you can hear when he hits the fucking suggestions, man. There, I, I just, I don't know how his brain the, does it. So yeah, those fast. people, uh, people who can freestyle like that, that their brains are just amaze me. It's right, like magic. It's comedic. It's not like, I mean, he's not the greatest rapper. It's all about the comedy of mm, it. Yeah. That's what I find the funniest, the best part. So yeah, yeah like check it out. Stuff. He's got. Oh, shut up. Ted. Had to be there. <laughs> it's yeah, our so, thing. It's right, fucking. Right. Check it out. He's got a lot of them. Teddy, life. Uh, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm some, having fun with my family, doing good. Not life. <laughs> nah, I, I thought I put E on that bitch. You somebody? I think <laughs> that's <probably wants it. laughs> somebody <laughs> fucking with me. I know how to spell. Goddamn it! <laughs> I know lives. I got three of them right here. <laughs> but yeah, just doing, you know, doing well. Yeah, just enjoying life. You know, had a shit ton of sex last weekend. Just doing good. Word. Lift. Lift right, and laugh. Lift and laugh. Lift and laugh. Lift, lift, lift. One of you evil white people are racist. Don't, don't, don't fucking try to do that shit to me. That's why you can't trust Whitey. Can't trust Whitey. We got to discredit him. <laughs> That's right. All right. Push him down. LTX goes poop, Ashtray. Oh, yeah. So the old crypto exchange, which uh, some of you, I'm sure. It, Mercy, you've at least heard it in, about it in the headlines. We're probably like, what the fuck was this about? All I know is Tom Brady lost a bunch of money. Um, Not a good year for Brady, huh? You probably will remember, Oracle can maybe play this clip in the background, but it was Super Bowl commercial with Larry David jumping through multiple periods of time where he's like, talk, you know, some old pharaoh and the guy is like, I invented the wheel. And he's like, it looks like a bagel. I got dead um, right and then oh, jumps to like him poo pooing on Thomas Edison's light bulb. Anyways, cock. gets all the way to the end where some guys are like, oh, you can invest in FTX, the safest cryptocurrency. <laughs> and he goes, mm, nah. nah, trust me, it's not going to work. Well, <laughs> turns out, motherfucker didn't work. <laughs> Um, this guy, he goes by SBF. Um, he was like going for that tech guru genius caricature where, um, you know, he has this floppy, sloppy mop of head hair. Steve so Jobs. He's wearing this Early shitty, Steve Jobs. Oh, like even worse than Steve Jobs because he was, he'd always wear like these fucking, um, like sandals and shitty oh. gym shorts. Like he, really? the thing is, he's. Um, what people don't realize is he he was the second largest donor to the Democ Democratic Party this election season, only second to George Soros. Wow! Really? And yes, there's pictures with him with Maxine Waters where wow. she's throwing kisses. There's pictures with him in fucking Bill Gates. Or, I mean, oh, uh, not Bill Gates, uh, Bill Clinton. Um, he was the second biggest donor to Joe Biden. <clears throat> um, and he was pushing heavily for the SEC to regulate um, the crypto industry. And the thing is, 
he was kind of this, he had this whole, he'd done all these podcasts where all these podcasters now who were shilling for him and he was actually paying them as sponsors to push for FTX crypto exchange. Um, they all touted how he, he's the richest, most generous billionaire. He did all this, uh, what do they call it? Proactive altruism where it's like, Oh, we're going to change the world in the most efficient way possible. And he like I don't drive a rich car. I have still have my Toyota Corolla. Like I'm just this guy who be, was a genius and just became super rich and have the second largest crypto exchange in the world. Well, turns out the like I'll probably do a, an episode on this when we figure out the details, but it'll be like that Mount Gox collapse mm-hmm. episode. Um, except for this one is just it's a crazier fucking story Out because of this guy your stupidity. Well, Mount Gox didn't really they didn't donate into the politics. This guy was trying to basically like get the SEC to like write the rules in his favor while these oh, other yeah. exchanges. Oh, you mean like other privileged white guys? That's how that's <laughs> how <laughs> white people would do it. Well <laughs> to do white people this, shit. Right? How fucking dare he? The thing is his entire it turns out his entire value for the most part was written on and based upon these FTT tokens that were basically like their own fun money bucks. It's their own coin, their own shit coins they made. And um, they like it, it having someone leak their balance sheet um, onto uh, like Coindesk, I think is this. Uh, it's a news network for mm-hmm. cryptocurrency news. And um, yeah, they like everyone realized like oh mo- so most of your value is your own fucking fun money yeah right like what happens if all your own fun money goes up you know and it's like people have invested billions of dollars in their mm. own actual cash and think the things people now are saying is like some of these reporters who are st- who are trying to dig down into this they're like this guy just came out of nowhere you can't be worth 18 billion dollars and you don't have a backstory He's like every billionaire yeah. on the Forbes list, like they've been, they've worked their way up to that, those billions, or they were inherited it either way. Like there's a story behind everyone. Mm-hmm. And this yeah. guy's just like, all of a sudden, just, Oh, I just made these crypto exchange. They and now, call it in art Providence, Provenance or. Hmm. Yeah. Provenance. Uh, yeah. Pro- what is it called with the, like the history of the piece? Prov- yeah. Something. Yeah. I think it is. It's Providence. Providence. Um, but the uh, like, there's a story. Yeah, you're right. There's a yeah, history. Like, <laughs> we know there, where this shit is. Fucking coming. There, there are articles, you know. Yeah, there. There's uh, tax, uh, you know, filings, and yeah. um, there's actual track Even records. Even if they're all lies, we know where it was yeah. originated mm-hmm. from. And the this guy, he sponsored the all the empires That's for Major League Baseball this last season. Um, sponsored the umpires? Yeah, they what a fucking how do you sponsor weird the thing. umpires. I mean, or like, well, I didn't know said, the like, umpires. All the umpires sponsored. had FTX yeah. uh, oh. uniforms and stuff. They also bought the name for, uh, I believe it's the Miami Heats Arena. Mm. Is now the FTX Arena. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> well, good luck with that. Yeah, it won't be for too <laughs> so much longer. guy just came out of nowhere and nobody knows where he came from. Well, the thing is, his whole like backstory was that, you know, he made his money on some of these initial. Uh, he he used to work for this like it was called Jane Street, which was a kind of you know crypto slash securities exchange, you know, like starting in finance, but like this Im- immense amount of wealth, like just kind of came up out of like nowhere in the sense that all of a sudden he was throwing that much money. That he was all of a sudden being seen everywhere in D.C., but yet all these other rich people are like, "Who the fuck is this sloppy ass?" You know, like even worse. Fuck this bitch. Worse than uh, Zuckerberg. You know, I mean, Zuckerberg did the whole you know hoodie kind of jeans look, yeah. but like this guy, he looked like the kind of guy who's still eating fucking Totina pizza rolls in his mom's basement, <laughs> and he yeah. was touted as a genius because he was playing League of Legends while in a meeting for some. Two point five billion dollar deal or million dollar deal. <laughs> Anyways, it was just like 
People are like fucking legend. idiots. Like old yes. old people sounds... with money are idiots and can be. Yeah. You know, it's just like if you plug in the TV, the HDMI, they think you're a genius. <laughs> that's, yeah. Yeah, same, yeah, that's, that's like, same fucking thing like here. Like hey, don't of, uh... don't you talk about Nana and Papa like that, okay? <laughs> sounds, yeah, it sounds like an episode of Silicon Valley. You know, it's like, yeah. oh my god, he's just—he's so smart. He can play this this video game that I don't understand with with so much money on the line. Yeah, it's just. I just turned fucking... the TV on. And yeah, right. These, like he's—he's he's just like, he's able to concentrate right in both places at once. <laughs> it's probably coding at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it happens. Oh yeah, so, my god. Uh, it's, it's just sexy a preview. To see that. Ashtray will have a whole show. Yeah, yeah. Once the real meat comes out, into some FTX fuckery. Oh yeah. All right. Fuck what you think, Oracle. Warm embrace of the couch. Uh, Not the couch. The couch. The, <laughs> the couch. So I finally got. I or I've had a full size couch, um, for the first time. And um, it's really nice. I like the couch. And oh, that's right. You just had a futon, didn't you? Yeah, I've always had kind of shitty couches, um, not like the big sectionals. Oh, the big couches are awesome. Yeah, so I've got yeah, one of yeah. those. And uh, the cat, one of my cats, loves coming up on my legs and fucking <laughs> laying there with me. And, you know, I'm drinking like an old-fashioned or something. And um, I basically fall asleep every time uh mm -hmm. when this happens <laughs> and <laughs> which is okay but it's not great for my back or you know just like sleep in general because yeah. i have to yeah. get up and then go to sleep yep. and then my wife is yelling at me <sighs> like Come back multi bed. yeah <laughs> so <clears throat> it's just I, I'm trying to break this habit. This is like do the yeah. same shit, dude. You know, it's I, I gotta no, stay off the fucking couch until I'm I ready to just fucking, give up. I'll fucking sleep. I like. I'll be like, oh, I'm gonna go to bed. It's like one in the morning, and then I wake up and it's three thirty, and I'm like, what the fuck Still happened? The right. Where am I? Yeah. Well, you also got a new couch. Oh, no, I'm so on like, the couch. I mean, Fuck. Holy shit. Maybe All it's, right. a, it's the first time in a long time that you will actually want to feel comfortable enough on your couch to sleep because it's been comfortable. Yeah, so, yeah. The, uh, it to, sucks though because he probably has a way more comfortable bed. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's the thing, I mean, and, and it just kind of breaks your sleep up too. You know, right. it's just like <laughs> it, it's not as solid as sleep, but it's fucking nice. You know, when it had when a it's good just, couch, it's just though, like, man. I, this is great. I'm a side God, sleeper, right. so what I like is you can. It's like you know, you can lean into the back of the couch, and then you know, you just slip the other way and lean back into it with the other way it's like oh man for a side sleeper fucking and a nice couch mm -hmm. fuck who needs a bed yeah i don't know I do. <laughs> yeah a bed, my back I'm really a back needs, a, who needs a, a bed back sleeper, dude. Needs my bed. yeah so yeah i'm just trying to break that <clears throat> shit get out of the couch mode until i'm really ready word all right uh i'm gonna talk about judge I don't even know her first name, Doro. I don't even want to give her any more fucking credit. Dinkleberry Doro. So anyway, she was in charge. She was the judge in that uh, in that Daryl Brooks trial. That okay. just went out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and he was just sentenced <clears throat> yesterday, but but the sentencing it started his like final statement started at like twelve forty. It didn't finish until six p.m. Oh my god. Yeah. So, and he only spoke for like an hour and a half, which is still long. But she spoke. What? For the remainder of the time. Yes, dude. And the only reason, and it was apparent to everybody, is that she's running for the for the Wisconsin Supreme oh. Court. She was grandstanding this entire in a fucking, fucking murder trial, a multiple murder, murder trial. Right. And she talked for five hours. Jesus Christ! It was like four. It was a little over four, I think, because he I talked mean, for. I a mean, lot. Jesus! But like, where it becomes apparent, it's a political stump. Wrap it And it up. wasn't even Ooh. like she would like make him leave the courtroom because he was interrupting, and then bring him back. Like, like, and then she's like, "Okay, oh, you, you gotta leave again." Like, just what the fuck? 
get, get this shit right. over with. What is wrong with you? Yeah. yeah. Like, she read every single fucking, like, 61 straight, I think it was 61 or 62 straight, 17 and a half years for Christina, blah, 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 blah. Oh, but isn't it by formality she has to read each and every one of those charges? Yeah, I get that part. But after the murders, like, like life sentence for blah, 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 she allowed applause. Hmm. I've never seen that. Right. Yeah, I've never seen it either. I don't watch too many deaths. Anymore. You'll get 25 years and you'll get 25 years. Right. Just fucking clapping. Right. I mean, it's, yeah. that's, that's a fucking Friday night in this household watching a so death I'm sentence. Death sentence. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's to fucking, I'm not going to vote. I can see Orcus on the sex of Shelly Liz. Yeah. I'm in my uh, fucking comfortable fucking couch. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, I'm sure you could find the footage online. Oh, God. Yeah, that sounds pretty gross. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it does sound fucking. Fucking Ron Uh, Johnson was beaten off to that shit. I'm sure. Right? All right, Ashtray. Fucking justice. Who's back? Uh, Yeah, so I got my. uh, Wahoos? My Wahoos. Um, Sense of uh, taste and smell are back for the most part. Oh, is COVID. that what the Wahoos are? Um, well, I, you know, like the, it's that, I, I'm assuming it's probably, it's like a dop- dopamine trigger that you get from most pleasurable things. Yeah, Take, yeah. for instance, the, uh, the first beer after a hard day of work. You know, you have that sip and you get that, that yeah, like pussy. satisfaction pussy feeling. Pussy when you get the panties off. Yes. Um, the uh, when you it's eat tasty things, food okay. and you're like, yeah. oh, that's amore. Uh, and that, you're going down on someone and they fart. Yeah, it's like it right. Burns your, your nose a little. Mm. Yeah, well, yeah. So for whatever reason, thanks, Teddy. Uh, that is still not. Hey, man, it's called love. Come back for me, which makes a lot of the enjoyments of life. So like, I can still like I can feel the effects of when I smoke weed. But I I don't quite get that that initial like ah like yeah, um, really, oh. and so it's like I have no desire to like take another hit or first hit um, of the day is fantastic. Yeah, you know the best like the first hit when you get home from work, um, it's that satisfaction isn't there yet. My first hit's been when I go to work. That's why I was uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, took me so long to finish my fucking dinner because it's like it's it's tasty but it's not satisfying and so it's like halfway through my meal i'm like Meh. yeah I'm bored i'm like the lion king tasty but myself. not satisfying is that from the lion king you would know uh, i haven't I watched know. the lion king since i was 12 I anyways know. hopefully my wahoos come back <laughs> come back wahoos we need you otherwise i'm gonna uh well, well, I guess it'll be like I'm sober not because I like need to be. It's just because I got to wire my reward centers like disarmed. Burp. <laughs> okay. Anyways. I have faith All in right. you and you restoring know me, your fucking you. alcoholism. No, you, yeah. you can do it, yeah. man. <laughs> in my veins. Just a just a little bit more at a time. <laughs> All right. Teddy, VR that can kill you. Okay, so uh, the guy who uh, who was the founder of uh, the Oculus firm, uh, his name is is uh, Palmer Lucky. Uh, he created a, a headset, a VR headset that can kill you. Uh, and the reason so fake, and the, it is real. Uh, the reason he made it uh, is because uh, he's a fan of an anime uh, of a manga and anime called uh, Sword Art Online. It's actually a pretty good anime and manga. Uh, the premise of the of the manga is uh, they come out with a new, uh, they come out in in the year twenty twenty two. Uh, with his new VR headset, uh, it's called Nerve Gear, um, and uh, it's it's called Full Dive VR. So you're in the game. Uh, the first day the game is released, uh, about I think it's like ten thousand people get trapped inside because uh, the creator uh, the, the, you can't log out, and if you, and if you die in the game, you die in real life uh, because the Nerve Gear runs off some kind of like microwave shit, and it, it pretty much just superposes his monkey brain up. So this guy's a huge fan, and he actually he actually made if you can see the picture of the uh, if you look into the the link I made. Uh, those three things poking out of it are charges. 
uh, that are pointed at your head. So if you die, it, it, it's, it's, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's working, he's working on a better, some a better model. long dangly things in a video. <laughs> yeah, see those <laughs> charges. It's like, has anyone actually tested this or like verified it's real? No, no, he hasn't, he hasn't tested, he doesn't want to test it on himself. But just, just just the fucking Wait. thought of doing some retarded shit. I mean, white people are fucking retarded. Yeah. Is my point. That that's my whole fucking you think, pretty much. It is retarded. I'm a big fan of the anime, but I would never do this shit. I don't I don't get you right. know. He's doing it for the lulls. Yeah. Son of a bitch. I, and I think I saw it was like on Vice magazine or something, and I was like, I don't even want to dignify this headline with a click. He's probably running for the Supreme Court or something. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah man. He, right? he did, he did talk about how cool, the, the, how, how cool the maybe fake daily charges that you're talking about was for like five hours. So, you know, you could have something there. I just think it's retarded. I mean, it's, it's I don't understand why you, you go to video games for fantasy. It sounds whole, like an whole, Elon uh, Musk, uh, you know, like fucking prank, like fake uh, product kind of thing from the boring company. Yep. Just like his penis rockets. And you know what? People would complain because, you know what? There's just too much lag. I couldn't even play long enough to die. <laughs> uh, <laughs> losers. You are right. I couldn't even play long <laughs> enough to die. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, All right. Well, yeah. I mean, shit. Go kill Any yourself. Any last words? Indiana Jones. Yeah. I got, I got, a, I got a question for everybody. You What's that? Me? You ever see a girl so funny you want to suck a, suck a fart out of her booty hole? Oh, yeah. Didn't you ask us that last week? Uh, I don't think so. I Anyways. Swear. Anyways. Yes. Uh, only a wow. fucking There's ass dog. <laughs> anyway. That's right. In all seriousness, go fuck yourself, Russia. It's our show. We're going to be here every Wednesday or Thursday night at 10 p.m. Central. Make sure you join the conversation at theredeyereport.com or facebook.com slash theredeyereport. Uh, like a share, so fuck us. We're down for whatever. I'm Mystic. This is asshole. I'm Oracle. <laughs> and this is the Red Eye Report. <laughs> I thought you put it in there, didn't you? I was looking at the fucking... <laughs> yeah, see, like, like he's the one who's occasionally our shit. <laughs> yeah, like, that's I how guess. he gets his pleasure now. He gets his. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think of my Yahoo's <laughs> fucking with your script. Typos, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs>